Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Paper Mario. With me this time, I have a special guest. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, folks. Uh, I'm Glenji. I'm going to be co-guesting here. Mm-hmm. So, um, we just managed to make it through the pre-prologue, I guess. And, uh, this bit of music here, uh, this specifically the Super Mario Bros. theme, was actually done by Koji Kanto himself. The rest of the music was done by, uh, Yuka... Uh, Su... Suji Yoko, I think. I saw that on the screen there, dude. <laughs> now, what kind of professional video recording is this? Just because I had a mouse cursor on the screen and then it just freezes for a second doesn't mean I'm terrible. <laughs> You're never gonna live this down, man. You're embarrassing yourself in front of YouTube. Oh, no. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. So, uh, Koji Kondo did, uh, like, uh, he does a lot of the main uh, musics for most of those classic Nintendo games, right? Yeah, and not only just the classic Nintendo games, but all up until more recent uh, Nintendo games. Oh, really? Yeah, he's still going. Well, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. And so he did a little guest tune for this game. That's, that's neat. Yeah. So these uh, fellows here, Star Spirits, you may remember them from the pre-pre-prologue cutscene. Yes. Uh, yeah, well... They're here to try to bring Mario back to life after, you know, double dying and ah, stuff. Ah, right, he had quite a fall there. Yeah, quite a fall, fire damage, lightning damage. Not a scratch on him, though. No, he's looking, he's looking pretty good. All things considered. So, that didn't really work. Oh. Oh, great, now Goomba's gonna run to him and finish him. Oh, Jesus, this... So this is when Nintendo took a strange turn. This was the 90s, after all. Mm-hmm. Really Everyone's dark, great. dark storytelling. Actually, it came out in 2001, around the heel end of the Nintendo 64. Oh, really? Yeah, pretty good farewell to the system, in my opinion. I'd say so. I mean, I, I did, uh... I played this game myself, and it was... It was... Pretty darn cool. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um... Goomba does not want to destroy us, which is nice. You know, I guess you can't really generalize. That's called racism. Yeah. Note how Mario sleeps completely flat like that. You'd think he'd at least get, like, a blanket or something. Yeah, it's actually kind of weird. Uh, if you ever go to sleep later on in the game, you do not sleep like that. I don't really know how you can sleep like that. I mean, oh, he doesn't yeah. have a pillow. Well, you know, they, they uh, embrace old Egyptian customs here in the uh, Goomba village. Oh, right, right. But there's also a toad here, I guess. Okay. Yeah, it's a Goomba village, and this is the uh, toad who runs the toad house here. Oh. Uh, toad houses are basically hotels from... Uh, any other RPG, you know, they fill your health and uh, magic if you have any. In this game, magic is called flower power. Ah, so Mario's going to get uh, magic in this game. Yes, uh, by the end of this video you should see how magic comes about. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, Goomba Village is where we are, actually, and it consists of two houses. I'm not sure if that really constitutes an entire village, but we're not here to judge. So Mario's been given a quest by a star with a mustache to go talk to the stars at Starhaven. So, we gotta get out of this village and get to uh, Starhaven. If you uh, were paying close attention uh, last video, the closest place to Starhaven is shooting the Star Summit, and I didn't really dwell on that too much. But a person mentioned that. This is a save block, of course. You know, save your game. So when you inevitably die, you yeah, just uh, well, come on back here. I haven't died yet, and... We'll see about that. Yeah. Not Here's if I have nice... anything to say about it. No. Oh, you were Bowser all along. I've been undermining you this whole time. So this is Goomba Village. Just gonna go this way and see if there's any way out of the village over here. Nope! Not just some lovely forest, but this, um... 
It's got sort of this like a uh, paper cutout sort of look to the most of the environment. Yeah, it's sort of supposed to look kind of like a diorama. In fact, that's exactly the look that uh, Super Mario Sticker Star went with, is uh, just a cutout diorama. And I, personally, I think it looks great. So it's kind of like a, a pop-out storybook. Exactly. Ah, okay. Something that uh, is very consistent throughout the Mario games is they are, or the Paper Mario games in particular, is they are most definitely 100% made to be like books. This one's supposed to be just a pop-out storybook. Oh, there's a little thing coming up right now. Uh, perk up your ears real quick. Oh, all right. Did you hear that trill on the music? I did. If you listen very carefully, you can tell that that's the sprinting music sound from Super Mario Bros. 3. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a nice little detail. There's a lot of little details like that in here. So who are anyway, all these here's Tom. Folks? Okay, well, um, this is a uh, Goompa. And he's basically Tom Selleck, from his looks, at least. <laughs> um, they're all vaguely southern, for some reason. Well, actually, it's just the mom who's vaguely southern. Not really sure what that's all about. Um, we have Goombario, who's a big fan of Mario's. Goombaria, who is, you know, Goombario's sister. And Goomama, who we've already met. And walking in here, we meet... Gooma. It's an old lady. Ooh, man. It's an age-impaired woman. <laughs> and there's one last member of the Goomba family. Uh, this is a uh, Goompa, and I'm sure he'll tell you. Don't that in a spoil second. it, man! Come on. Very frank, dude. But quite frankly, I'm a big fan of this. I'm digging his eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Also, note how he's fixing a veranda with no hands. He's doing it with his head, man. He's just, he's just taking a break. He's got skills. So, gate's fixed. Problem solved. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go. Sound, sounds good. Oh, wait. This is a, this is a relaxing little trip, you know? Just double-checking to see if there was any more dialogue, but nope, that's it. Oh yeah, you mentioned that a lot of NPCs have uh, multiple tracks of dialogue? Mm-hmm. Especially if there's, like, a limited cast, for instance, in this village. Hmm. Well, cool. I guess we can just uh, head on out. That was, a nice little, that was a nice little visit. Yeah, he's telling us just to follow the path straight ahead, and we should make it right there. Alright. Straightforward, I like that. Mm-hmm. Who's that? Wait, wait what's this? <sighs> Uh-oh. So this, uh, nice customer. She is, uh, the person who was in the pre-prologue cutscene with, uh, Bar Bowser, who helped him ruin everything. Ah, uh, yes, the one that got taped in there. Uh, also note that, uh, Gumbario just called her weird. In that same cutscene, the, uh, narrator called her weird. So that seems to be a bit of a running thing. So Potentially some kind of uh, subtle hint at a connection to, uh, what was it, Macbeth? <laughs> the Mario games are a much more well-read series than you might think. 100% yes. So King Bowser's messing around with absolutely everything while we're stuck in a tiny village because of a game. What a jerk. She understands the lay of the land. There's only that one path out of here. Pretty clever. He is... he's not very happy about this. Ooh. Wait, we were out for days and days, and he just finished fixing that gate. A Goomba can only do so much with just, like, bonking stuff with his head. I know, and I appreciate that, but she just wrecked it, and, you know, I totally understand his anger. Good, yeah. I saw that again, by the way. Oh. Oh, man. Princess Peach is in danger, we gotta save the day. But how can we get past this big block of cheese? Uh, may all the Goombas need to combine their forces together to perform some kind of really amazing head bonking attack? I think that happens in Super Mario Sticker Star, or Paper Mario Sticker Star. Ooh. Except that's a boss, so. 
So we're just checking the dialogue of everybody once again. Just generally, hey, Goompa has a hammer and he's on the veranda. You should go check him. Ah, gonna go get the, the hammer action going on. Yeah, but uh, Goombario has a little more to say. Yeah, he seems to know a lot about people. Yeah, he, he's got like an encyclopedic knowledge of things he should have no knowledge of. But Smart whatever. Killer. Yeah. Uh, Goompa actually taught him everything he knows. Oh, cool. So... Something's not right here. So the veranda's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I love the way he falls right there. And, you know, also falling from a good 50 or so feet, Goompa, no damage. It's a tough old man. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I guess Cammy put a block back here, too. Why? To impede our progress. She got some real foresight. Yeah, she, uh, she kind of throws blocks all over the entire Mushroom Kingdom, just, a. Uh quick message there. It's probably just what she does in her spare time. Mm-hmm. Probably didn't even know Mario was coming here. She was just like, eh, block. Well, I guess if you're gonna block someone's way, you might as well use a block, so... Yeah. It was probably just to mess with everybody else. Mm-hmm. So, um, this is the first time we're actually taught of a mechanic. You can shake bushes to try to get stuff out of them. Oh, yeah, I saw you were doing that earlier. Mm-hmm. That's because I've uh, played the game before. I already know my way around. Oh, good. This is no blind LP, this one. Nope. So in general, just grabbing some coins. Now, uh, are coins going to be particularly important? You can use them for many, many things. This little sound clip is from Super Mario Bros. 3, and we have just gotten ourselves a hammer. Nice. So yeah, we can whack things with a hammer now. So you can also smash bricks with your head. Mm-hmm. Classic this, Mario stand. This really does take the classic mechanics of Mario into a whole new direction. Mm-hmm. So you can whack tiny blocks that are on the ground, you can whack trees. In oh, general, it's show it <laughs> This is really showing you how you can interact in the with the environment in Paper Mario. I mean, it's limited interaction, but in general, you can actually do things at places and have it have stuff happen. So, would this mean that uh, Peach sort of has like a, a brand image going on, where she's actually like really dolls and stuff? I don't know. Maybe a Goo Mama made that doll. Oh, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. This game's kind of big on being cute, so yeah, probably. <laughs> Oof. Oh, wow. Uh, so, yeah. Ooh. That font got huge. Yeah. There were artifacts everywhere. <laughs> so, this is Junior Troopa. The first defeatable boss of the game. You cannot lose against him unless you actively choose not to fight. And choosing not to fight doesn't help you at all. So, um, there's a few new things we can do in our inventory. We can, uh, use a hammer. We can use items. Well, we can't use items. We don't have it. You can do nothing for the turn, or you can run away from the battle. So I see you'll actually use your hammer in the fight. Yep. Well, it still doesn't the same, does the same damage as a jump, but it's a uh, ground-based attack, which has advantages. I'm sure we'll see that, uh, elaborate on that later on in the game. Mm-hmm. Oh no! Oh, what's he gonna do? Oh jeez! Oh shucks! Whoa! Whoa! Oh man! This is getting a little too dangerous for me, man. He's he's made me enter the danger zone. Oh, that was, that was close. Mm -hmm. Now star points—they're experience points. You get a hundred of them, you level up. Huh, okay. The more you level up, the less experience points you get from uh, enemies from previous areas and stuff. Ah, okay. That's a good. That's a good way of balancing it. Yeah, it's anti-grinding mechanic. 
And, you know, it's good to know that you don't have to grind in this game. So I now mean, if you want to get those really, like, high-end aethers... Ugh. Well, there's some awesome alchemy sort of stuff you can do with food. Oh, cool. This is a nice little healing block. It will fill your hearts and your magic when you get it. Well, you have magic, you just can't use it. I thought there might be something hidden up there, but there wasn't. There was something hidden up here, though. Oh, Fire Mario time. Aw. Nah, this game's big on keeping Mario the way he is for as much as possible. Possibly just to cut down on, like, the amount of damages they have to make. Oh, so he doesn't even go big? Ugh. Uh, I'm he can go feeling small. ripped off. So, we got a hammer, we can break this. Nope. Oh. <laughs> you see the way he wiggles when he hits it? Yeah. Yeah. Don't go it's hit an old man, dude. Yeah, it's to show that his hammer cannot break every block we come across. Ah, so we'll need something else to break those sort of blocks. Yes, much later on. Ah. So we're saying you can uh, go back to previous areas to, you know, mm -hmm. find stuff that you couldn't before. Hilariously enough, that's a complete red herring. There's nothing inside that block. <laughs> so here we go, our first random battle. Well, somewhat random. I kind of sped it up a little. Oof. So this is a first strike. You hit them, you do a damage to them early. Then you can just whack them one more time and finish it off. Oh, well that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't, um, like in old games like uh, Earthbound and stuff do things like that? Oh! Sh Ooh. Yep. So that was uh, demonstrating how there are enemies where you do not want to use a certain attack type on them. Ah, uh, just like how if Mario jumps on something with a spike in the old games, he'd be like, oh no, dead. Yeah, he just died those. Yeah. Doesn't really punish you as harshly as anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, these guys, the hammer option is just completely deactivated, so you jump on them. Ah, because the hammer can only be used on enemies on the ground. Yep. So isn't there, like, a way to, like, throw your hammer at something in the air? I mean, like... Nope. Hmm. There's some way you can do that later on in the game, but right now, no. You just destroyed that Goomba, my goodness. Yeah, you got a little strong. So I see that, um, the way they handle getting items and stuff after battles is the enemy just, like, explodes into it. Yeah. Oh, also, um, I kind of, uh, did some editing to go get more health before I ran forward here, so that's why the enemies respawned. Understand. I mean, you need every every bit of help you can get in this challenging gauntlet of a game. Mm-hmm. We had to make it through, like, no more than seven enemies there. Oh. So, here we made it. We got Aww. the hammer, we're back in, and the we, The heartwarming uh... family reunion. Yep, look, she's actually crying a little. Oh, jeez. I'm, I'm, I'm tearing up a little. Mm. It's just heartrending. So Goombas in general just have two hit points, so you hit them twice, they're done. Okay. Later on, that changes, but not yet. Ah, so you're saying it's going to be much tougher Goombas as the game progresses. Alright, so we're going to give her back her doll now. Psych! Oh! You monster! Uh, uh, when I'm done with it. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, here you go. I mean, how can you say no to that? Yeah, come on. Just a little girl, dude. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got one of these earlier, but these are star pieces. They have oh. a use later on in the game, and I think it'll show up in the next one. And we just got a little smooch from the little girl. Aww. And Mario did a nice little shaky thingy. The same thing that happened after the hammer hit, actually, against the uh, block. That's quite, a kit. That's quite a smooch she's got. Mm-hmm. He's all bashful about it. So, they're telling us about his incredible fighting powers and how he's been training his whole life to be as powerful as Mario. Yeah, he seems like he's a pretty big fan, so he'd be like, oh, I must become like my hero. Yeah, Goompa actually taught him how to fight and everything. Oh, just uh, doing a little bit of rapping with Mario. Mm-hmm. Kids these days. I'd love to hear Mario rap. Alright, so badges. Um, Goompa offers to teach us how to use badges right now, but... I know how to use them, and I'll explain them when we get to use them. Badges are really useful. They allow you to do special moves, like a jump that's more powerful that this one does, 
including a badge that allows you to throw a hammer. The oh. thing about yeah, the thing about the badges is that they take magic to use flower power. So you gotta increase your flower power somehow, and we'll see how that happens on the next episode. I'm positive. And we can actually do some variation in battle. It's not just hitting each other back and forth now, now that we actually have something else to do. Ah, so things are going to get a little more complex. Mm-hmm. Little by little, the game's been introducing more and more to combat. <sighs> this kid's got faith in us. We can't let him down. Exactly. There you go, whips and bows are butt. Mm-hmm. We meet up with a nice local family who has faith in us, and that sets us out on our journey. What a nice start to a, a nice adventure. Mm hmm You're right, Goombario. Princess rescuing is cool. And that makes us the coolest. Wait, what's Gramps talking about? He's no longer a child. And we agree. We will take him under our wing. Oh my goodness! Are you saying that we must... Create an RPG party? Yep, Kumbaru joined the party. So, nice little ditty here, and it tells us what he can do. He can tell us about everything. I wasn't kidding when, he's, when I said he has an encyclopedic knowledge. Ah, even things so he should know. His, uh, his fanboy knowledge is going to come in handy. Yeah, even uh, people he has no reason to know anything about, he can tell you all about. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will be putting out a video once we uh, make it to, to the next area. That shows all of his tattling. Tattling is, of course, what he does in order to tell you about everything. One thing I should note is, uh, of the few things that I do remember from the game, I, I remember the uh, partner joining music. Mm -hmm. This it was always one of my favorite songs from this. It's a really lovely little piece. Yeah. I mean, personally, uh, almost none of the music we've heard yet, except for like the opening theme, has really been one of my favorites, but... Pretty much every song from this game I adore, because they all do an incredible job of getting across emotions and settings. It's got a very lovely sense of sound design. Mm -hmm. So, the nagging mother and everything. Oh, and the mom said, uh, don't pretend that uh, you know all the things that Goompa taught you. So Goompa actually taught him about everyone. Oh, wow. Goompa seems to be the coolest person ever, by the we way. We probably should have taken him instead. Screw this kid. Goompa actually was like, hey, I, if I was a few years younger, I'd come with you." Oh man, that would've been so cool. I'd rather play that game. Yeah. This adventure would've probably been over much faster if Goompa could've come. Goompa would've just gotten us through the rest of the game himself. Mm-hmm. Not to spoil that we're getting more partners, but we're getting more partners. Oh, we are. That's cool. Yep. Goompa would've just heard, like, oh, Bowser took the Star Rod? Well, I'm off. Actually, yeah, he would've. Kingdom uh, saved in a day. I guarantee you. I will actually come back to talking about Goompa later on. Really? Yeah. Um, so we get a Goomnut, and that's basically an Ether, and it'll restore our magic power. So um, he reminds us that we need to actually equip the badge, so this is our pause screen. And this lets us do a power jump, and that means more damage when you jump on someone. And oh, cool. You need to use uh, badge points, we have three of them right now, in order to equip badges. Oh, and that balances out like what kind of moves you can pull off. Yes. Ah, uh, I see. There are some matches later on that take up to nine spots. <laughs> Whoa. So I'm just going through the things we had, our stats, badges, items, party, spirits that we've rescued, and of course oh, the map. Oh, look at that map. Oh, that's adorable. It's like a little Mario 3 thing. Mm-hmm. So we're officially at the end of uh, this. Well, it's been a good start to an adventure. Mm-hmm. Thanks for joining me for it. Okay, I guess that's it. Yeah, have a good one, folks. <laughs> Later.